All right, I guess we'll open the meeting. Uh, Situate Board of Health meeting, Situate Town Hall, Selectman's Hearing Room, February 23rd, 2015. Take a motion to accept the agenda. Make a motion to open the meeting and accept the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, getting right into business. Open meeting, we accepted the agenda. Uh, public hearing, update regarding development of private well regulations. Which, uh, thank you, by the way, I guess you got them an email. You got them an email today. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw that I got them. I you saw I got them, yeah. I got them too and I printed a copy, but I didn't really have a chance to review them, so I can't yeah. say any different. Yeah, well, that's fine. I figured at this point mm -hmm. I would just kind of orient you to what's in here, mm -hmm. and then we can talk about the process for a review. Okay. You know, both your review and then other board slash department reviews, how we want to organize that. Perfect. Um, so this is my best shot at draft regulations, taking into account all of the regulations from the towns listed at the top and in typical me fashion you will learn I love color it's how I keep myself organized so if you have a color version I'm sorry that we don't have color here but if you get a color version you'll see wh which towns I took which things from so you can get a, get a sense as to the how it's all blending together and, and whose regs we took quite a bit from um, and then the other thing I relied on was um, the private well guidelines from the state and then this excerpt from it which I gave you guys a copy of and this is going to be referred to several times because it includes um, the well testing parameters both chemical and biological radiological and um, bacteria so I figured rather than making our own tables and going crazy we would have you know an attached reference where is this found this state um uh, publication. So on the very bottom, it tells you the oh, source. Okay. On the first page yes, of that yes, document, it, it okay. gives you the source. So the idea is we're providing the current, if in fact everybody agrees that this is a reasonable approach to both sampling parameters and frequency, um, we can attach the current version to the regulations that we promulgate. But you'll see once you get to read them, that I say it becomes the applicant's responsibility to locate and use the most up-to-date version of this as they move forward. That way we're not constantly updating yeah. our regulations. And, and these were done May, May of 14, so these, yeah. are, these are pretty current. Very recent. Um, these so are the same ones you were talking about uh, last meeting we had. Yes, okay. yes. So what they do is they break out, um, jumping right to the well parameters. They break out um, into four tables what they recommend for inorganic compounds, so primarily the metals, and what their recommended sampling frequency is, whether it be initial, every 10 years, um, table 8, so it's the third page. Um, and then Table nine, oh actually, and actually table eight has um, synthetic organics as well. Bacteria, radionuclides, and VOCs. So let me ask you a question. Uh, any of these inorganic compounds, is any of this different because we're coastal? Because I know this is just general from the state, but are there other things that we should be testing for because we are coastal? This, this truly runs the gamut okay. of things. It covers Indicator chemicals for septic systems, which obviously is really important to us. I believe it includes sodium, which would account for brackish water. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty all encompassing. That's what I was going to say yeah. coastal salt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it specifically talks about sodium. And DEP, I think on the last page of this, has recommendations. Yeah. It's, um, I wish they numbered their pages, but it's the second to last page where it says additional comments on recommended frequency. Under number three, the very last paragraph, it says, exceedance of the recommended limit for sodium, noted in table eight, is of concern to persons with very specific dietary issues and heart problems. So they talk about rolled salt, and then um, also discussing these with the homeowner. If you have a, a concentration above 20 ppm. Um, well, the reason I ask is because you know, the way that we're situated here, and we've had this conversation, is that they're using the brine, you know, on the, you know, the third of the town uses the brine, and I don't know what chemicals are in that, what I mean. Oh. So if they, 
if they're saturating the roads the way they are, it may go into somebody's drinking well. You think so? I don't know. I don't know what's in the brine. Do you know what's in the brine? I have no idea. Uh, so that's that's one question right off the well, bat. It would have to be yeah. it would have to be pretty concentrated. I mean you'd have to have a pile of it right near I mean by the time it leaches down into a you know well, I mean, not that it couldn't happen, but well. So take for instance that guy, the guy that the house that that uh, that you stopped at, right on the driveway there. That that well is five feet from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You know that would yeah. never we yeah. would never allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you can I can you you can see those DEP those uh, DPW trucks going down spraying that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know it's mm -hmm. five feet yeah. either way, so it's fifteen feet wide. That's yeah. that's why I ask. Sure. Well, you, you wouldn't put it. And I just happened to see it the other day. That's why it's just fresh in my head. You, you, wouldn't, that stuff. you wouldn't put it well next to the um, the DPW yard either at that point. Right? What? <laughs> right. But those people did put a well there. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, there uh, is. That, yeah, that one in the driftway there. No, 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 no. But I mean, the, you near know. the salt yard. Oh, near the salt yard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah near the barn, right. Well, there have been, there have been towns um, north of Boston, one in particular, that has a pretty significant contamination from road salt um, to the point where these folks actually can't drink their water from their wells so it is a it is a legitimate concern so it's so question number one already you know in terms of review and asking for departmental input elsewhere that I already wrote it down so to find out the chemicals in brine see if it's missing from you know what the general state recommendations are and see if we need to add something which is easy enough to do did you put in your um, in your regulations here, did you put a, a arbitrary number down as far as testing? I know it says every 10 years or determined by us to put something in yours. So I, so, so I, I put follow the recommended frequency provided by the state, I think, unless, you know, do, unless there is a concern for um, I don't additional think, contamination. I think, I think it should be less than 10 years. That's just me. That's fine, and yeah, that's and that's the point of this is, you know, uh, there's also a thing about um, property transfer, you know, recommending, too, right. you know, recommending specific testing and property transfer. So these are all things, you know, by all means, the state provides a guideline, and so far, you know, I've recommended following that, but we can clearly be, you know, more stringent or you know more active than than they are. So all all things to to consider and write down and drop to me like. So that we can kind of yes, go over it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Especially with you know the level of development that's coming. If there were historical releases that are unknown, the development can cause releases to move. So that would be, um, you know, a reason to request more frequent. We mean by that by stirring up the ground. Right. So, ones. right. So right. you can. So depending on what changing your, water flow over. So right. So right. yeah, depending on what your subsurface is consisting of. Let's say you had a spill and it was in clay and it's been encased in clay and all of a sudden you go in and you drive, you know, a well or you dig to build a foundation. You could release a pocket hmm. of, you know, whether it be gasoline, you know, gasoline pocket or you know something that's been relatively stable over time because it's physically isolated. Mm -hmm. It could move. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so there's so definitely reasons to consider doing it more frequently. Um, but for now, you know, just to throw it out there as a draft, I've you know pretty much followed yeah. what the state recommends. So yeah, me either way, consider. just on the table, and I definitely like the idea about on a transfer of title. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and there's only one or two towns. At least transfer a title well. outside of the family, not in a you know kind of like Title Five follows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of stepping away from that for a second. Yeah. You, well, you tell me, yeah, to your point, uh, 25 feet from any public or private way, that's 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 not 25 feet. Five feet. <laughs> Ten feet. Tops. It's right there. Yeah. Right there. So the way this is organized, just to kind of walk you through so you'll see the flow of things, it's, you know, purpose and authority. Why are we doing this and why are we allowed to do this? Um, definitions and terms. So I try to... Um, limit the terms to those that were relevant to um, to our regulations that may not necessarily be obvious. Um, so that's section two, that's almost two pages. 
Section three is the private well construction permit application and fees. So it walks a person through what do they need to give us in order to get. Um, so, because I'm, I'm on the color coded one, yeah. um, proof that the owner of any property within 250 feet of a butters. Yeah. What, what town is that from? So that idea is from Hingham. Okay. Where you seen that? C5? Five um, sub uh, sub five three. Three, two, three point two five. five. So, um, so the idea came from Hingham. The distance, they, I believe they had a hundred feet. <coughs> I put two hundred feet or two hundred and fifty feet, so that we matched our notification for abutters with um, the distances for certain types of contamination or certain property uses. Okay. So I've increased that from what another town says. And I kind of thought about it. Okay, so let's say you have a well in the middle of your property and your property is a couple of acres. You, at 100 feet, you may not have more than one or two people that you need to notify that you're putting in a well. So I thought to capture more of the neighborhood. Sure. Um, couldn't hurt. Um, so it kind of walks through, you know, how long permits are good for, and they're not transferable, you know, all those, those kinds of things that come with actually getting us to sign off on a permit as if we were signing off on a septic plan and giving that permit. Same, same kind of checklist. Um, so only 10 feet from a building, huh? Yes. Okay. And that's pretty consistent. In one of my older versions, um, let's see if I have a good older version. I took all of the towns that are noted at the top and I put all their distances side by side to see what the consensus was and either went with the majority or went with the more conservative number if there was no clear consensus. So trying to take the you know best practices from other towns mm -hmm. and applying them to us unless there's a reason to specify something differently. Are, are, are septic permits transferable? Did you have yes. the? Because you have the at the private well construction. And these are not transferable. Not transferable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would think I would want to be. Con I mean, I hate to sort of keep jumping from here. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's something I think we, should, we would want to be consistent yeah, with. That's, the, that's know, also from Hingham. If we let people transfer our septic system, I mean, I don't see why we would a transfer of a well it wouldn't be the same thing. But, you know, I, Do you want us to go through this and sort of just, um, you know, so, sort of say which ones we like, which we don't like? I mean, that kind of, is that what you want? Yeah, yeah, is? absolutely. Like, I figured, you know, between now and the next meeting, you guys can think about it, read them, look for consistencies or inconsistencies, things you like, things you don't like, and then provide me with feedback. I don't expect feedback right now. I'm just kind of walking you through what's here. You just sent a copy to Jimmy DeBarros, yeah? Well, that was the other piece of what I wanted to talk to you guys about. So. Obviously, we're not the only board and department that has a vested interest in these. Um, and in fact, when I was at the Water Resource Committee meeting, this general topic came up. So I kind of gave them the heads up that we were working on this. And they said, oh, that's great, because we were starting to feel as though this was something that we needed to work on and provide to a board so that something like this gets implemented. Because of course, they're very concerned that our water resources are limited and that if you allow folks to put in a private well, you're still pulling from the same aquifers that the public supplies are pulling from, and we're gonna further deplete the resources. So what he said, what he's gonna be looking for is to put a flow restriction. You know, you can only, um, uh, your flow can, is limited to X number of gallons per minute or something like that. And I said, you know, Jimmy and, and John Clarkson, that would be your your area of expertise so if you want to provide input on that please you know i'm no engineer you know you give us guidance on you know your area of expertise um so the departments and boards that i'm aware of that in my mind should review these whether it be after you know the four of us come to some consensus and say this is what we all think is best 
or whether we hand these out and say everybody give us feedback all at once and you know we do this in one huge revision whichever one is preferred is fine with me but I think the groups that need to see it are conservation because there are you know some citing issues just like there are going back to title five there's citing issues wetlands stormwater all that kind of stuff um, conservation DPW in general um, water department specifically sure to Yep, sewer specifically, the Water Resource Committee as their own entity. Um, they'll, I know they'll, they already said they want to look at it. And the North South River Watershed ooh, Association. Sorry if I have their a name wrong. Um, they were at the Water Resources Committee meeting and they requested a copy so that they could review it as well. Um, uh, Town um, administrator is interested. Or not. Yep, town administrator and selectmen are interested in, in seeing what's going on. Um, but, but, but whose ultimate responsibility is it? Ultimately, it's Us. our responsibility. Okay, absolutely. You know, I, it, 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 you just don't want it to. You want input, but you just you, you want to make sure there's just not too many. I mean, I could see this dragging on for months and months and months because people want to make different revisions. And we and, and we know. can give them a deadline. Yeah. It's you know you have. Just like, you know, planning, the planning department gives us plans and, and such mm -hmm. to review and they said, you know, we're having a hearing on X date, we need your comments by, you know, some date before then. So we can give a deadline and say, please review these and provide us all input by this day or sorry, you know. And I definitely think we should have our own done. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, we have our framework. Before it goes to people. Before it goes to anybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I think the confusion would be with input from oh. different boards, and then we're stepping over each other. She'll at least have 15 emails that she'll have to compile. <clears throat> and yeah, and then at least we can look at it and say, well, so and so said fine, they said fine. This one had a little comment. We can see if we can interweave that into what we have, mm -hmm. or if not, then we can at least respond back to them and said we looked at it and whatever the answer may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there, there there are a lot of folks um, who are interested in this. For, for a variety of reasons so I think we'll get some I think we'll get some input yeah um, especially since words gotten out that we're working on them and that it's not an abstract the definitions are the definitions hmm? the, uh, the definitions are pretty much the definitions yeah. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we don't need to I mean we don't need to really be taking with those right no but it, it's kind of nice if you know if there's a second or third set of eyes to make sure that mm -hmm. you know it makes sense that you know what I've typed or John, what I've compiled. you do makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Eight o'clock on a Saturday night may maybe quite not make sense in in some some cases. But yeah, I mean they're they're combinations from different towns of different definitions that I thought were important. They're pretty straightforward, but it's always nice to have another set of eyes. Um, some of the stuff I see here, I just. <clears throat> I'm looking, and I guess at 3.24, a description and location of all existing and proposed structures as well as location of any potential source of pollution within 500 feet of a private well. What does that, I mean, I understand what it means, but. Why? Keep, yeah. It tells you what you need to test for. So let's say you live at a house on Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Yeah and you want to put a private well in, and you live right next door to the gas station. Okay. We need to have that well tested for VOCs and VPH, because those are gasoline-related chemicals that people shouldn't be drinking, many of which are carcinogens. Or we find out that historically, and it's a very easy thing, mm. um, they can go on to the Mass DEP searchable site list, look up situate, type in their address and they'll see the number of listed sites within a certain radius. Mm -hmm. um, and it tells you whether there used to be um, a release at a dry cleaner. So it's really to give guidance for what chemicals need to be tested. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you explain it well. I just don't see it written here and it, it, it's like there's a huge burden well, yeah, you put on the engineers and you're, you're asking people to yeah. sign something that, you know, proposed how some surveyor going to know that there's something possibly proposed or you know, really, you know I understand I do and it's just I got to step out of 
my shoes here and think about the poor guy that's trying to write this plan up. Well, I'm signing I, away stuff that's. Well, maybe uh, in terms of proposed structures, it's proposed structures on the property in which the well would be installed. Because mm -hmm. in some cases, it could be a brand new house and they want their own private water supply. Right. So we need to know, same thing with the septic system. Where is that septic system going to be relative to the house? Yeah, no, I get so, that. So maybe that's a clarification of, you know, description and location of existing and proposed structures on the property in mm. which the well will be sited. Right. And then locations of the sources of contamination. And the sources of contamination are listed in the checklist. The things, you know, whether what we're looking for. for so if there's a gas station within 500 feet, that should be noted? Just noted, yep. Yeah, okay. Basically, I mean, that yes. makes sense to me, and that, that could would be a side note. It wouldn't have to be on a plan. Yeah, no, you don't, have to, so you don't have to put it on a plan. Draw a 500 no, you don't foot draw scale. On that's, okay. why, that's why it's separate from the plan needs to show. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, um, you know, gas station, you know, Joe Schmo's gas station. Now, do the plans have to be signed the way I'm reading this? Yes. Well, hold on. P specific scale signed and stamped by a Massachusetts registered professional land surveyor, registered sanitarian professional engineer, environmental consultant. They have to be signed or by all well, those people? Or the well driller. There's an or at the very end. Or a well driller. So one of those people is qualified to make up this plan. So probably in there it should say and or at the beginning. It almost sounds like all those people have to sign off on it. Yeah, we could put ORs in, in between each one. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Or I, I wasn't the best yeah. uh, English student, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've got this one. Yeah. It does make it look... It does, it does appear that, that five people have to sign it. No, so we definitely need ORs. And I'd almost... Uh, I guess a surveyor, a surveyor draws the land lines, and it's almost like a plan should be drawn by a surveyor and or an engineer, and then checked maybe by the well driller, you know what I mean? Or the sanitarian or somebody, I don't know how that works, I'd have to read this a little more. Yeah, yeah. Well, think, think yeah. about it, these are all things, please. Because, uh, you know, a land surveyor is, is really the one that says this well is so many feet from the property line. And you can't trust a well driller to say that because they're not licensed to say that and, and not to put anybody down or knock them. They wanna make the sale. I think we, I think we gotta, I mean like, I'm looking at 5.1, if a yep. property is served by the public water supply, then a part of the private well may not be installed. I mean, that kind of defeats the whole purpose here. No, no it doesn't. So if a property is served by town water, it can't also have a private drinking water well. That's that's pretty standard. Well, no, no, part of a, well, well, then you would have to disconnect from pu public water. Is, 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 is right. for, so if you have one, you can't have the other, is what that's trying to say. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But so is the town of Situate worded that if there's water that runs by the house, you have to have public water? Or can you disconnect from public water at any time and do a potable well? But I see what you're saying. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. Right. You can you can't be served by two at the exactly. same time. Maybe that exactly. some language should be somehow sewn in there. Yeah, because I thought that was one of the ones out on uh, Strawberry Point where we they had an argument about the water and the well, and we actually went to court on it. Uh, Talking the one at Glades, right? Out in the Glades, yeah. Uh, Part of the argument was that if there's town water there, then should have to hook up, but they were complaining about the water quality. And there was an so issue with the timing on it. That's not a prerequisite for sewer and or septic, though. Um, I think in some parts it is. If the sewer runs by your house, you're supposed to hook up. Why should I have to pay 18000 bucks to hook up? If, if yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Even if you pay the betterment, you don't have to hook up. Yeah, yeah. well, why should yeah. I have to do that? So, yeah. right. Yeah, so this is, you know, so that piece, you know, if it needs to be rewritten, all it's trying to do is say you can't have both. Right. right. You know, you can have an irrigation so well, but you well, can't well, have well, Our irrigation wells, are the irrigation, are they incorporated in this or are they separate? So when it comes to siting a well or some of the generalized things like well construction, they're all the same. 
you know, they're treated the same way. You build a well the way you build a well. Um, but you'll see section five is strictly for drinking water wells. Um, and then in section, so that's used as a potable supply. And then in section nine, for water sampling and water quality requirements, 9.4 is drinking water and 9.5 is irrigation. So they're broken out in weight, you know, for where they need to be, I think. You know, decommissioning, it's the same. Well construction, it's the same. Permitting, it's all the same. Um, so I've lumped them together in those sections. Now, do you guys think in two weeks could we review this and come back and? Sure, I have a question. Why is it recommended that an irrigation well be tested for coliform bacteria every year, but portables are not? Where is it? Nine five two. So nine five two. Um, so potable. Go to so if you look at table eight, yeah. total coliform bacteria monitor once every year or as otherwise specified by the local board of health. So it is consistent with. And that's recommended, so we're not requiring them to do that. It's recommended. Right. Recommended. Right. And that's basically, you know, to. Kids playing out in the front lawn. Kids playing in the front <coughs> lawn. You know, is there potential contamination from a septic system nearby? That kind of thing. Right. Um, so they are actually okay, consistent. Just, just curious. Yep. Just curious. And you said, but back to the construction, is a irrigation well constructed the same as a yes. portable well? Mm -hmm. Just it would, it would, the depth would be different. You know, likely would be different. I yeah, po possibly. Well, once you hit water, you hit water. Yeah, right? you hit water, you hit water. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to choose. Well, you wouldn't aquifer. dig down to an aquifer and, and have it uh, squirting up from the pipe for a for an irrigation well, so to say. I wouldn't dig 400 feet for a irrigation well. Oh, so you well. wouldn't. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I just think we're going to have grab groundwater myself. There's going to be a uh, there's going to be a, a, an increased interest in irrigation wells in the town. Why does that? Because the water rates are going to go uh, going crazy, yeah. and so. Do we separate them? And 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 a few of the things may be re redundant. Almost have you almost have to, you know either you have two sets or you have a set A for potable and a set B for irrigation, which have to you know the definitions would be the same on each on each section. Um, it's just a lot of duplication. Well, you've got it broken down, right? Section 8, Section 9, something. So for well construction, I have them put together because right. to the best of my knowledge, and I am no well driller, I'm no engineer, um, but to the best of my knowledge, the way you install a well with the casing and um, the grout and all of those components are, very, are the same. Depths might be different. I tried to stay away from the engineering, you know. I leave that to the well driller. Leave that to the well driller. I agree. Yeah. Um, but... You know, obviously it's open to, you know, if we need to specify something for a potable well versus a private well in the construction slash engineering aspect, by all means, it's this is the time to do it. Artesian, that's the word I was looking for. I Artesian. love artesian wells. That's where it's... They're kind of fun to sample. Comes up, bubbling up. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's... That's good drinking water. That's that's ground pressure. That's what causes that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, those are usually deep. That's, that's in, deep in the bedrock. You'll see, I think, our t I think it might be even in the definition. We wouldn't have it's in, in the definition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the definitions, artesian aquifer. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, brown water, you could, it could dry out in the dry seasons. Right. You know, or, or whatever. That, that, that would be the, the old, uh, <laughs> uh, old oaken bucket. That would just be a groundwater well. Dip the bucket there. So in terms of siting and, and location, like I said, I try to take the best from all of the, or the, the most consistent distances, um, but I did put one note in here, which is why it's really tiny when it prints, is um, for one of the setbacks, um, I did not separate out the setbacks for an irrigation well um, compared to a non-potable well relative to Title V. 
So we're so the way I have it structured right now is more strict than the setback distance required for an irrigation well to a septic system components than Title V does, if that makes sense. It makes sense. So something for you both to think about, or, or the three of you to think about, to see if we want to be stricter than Title V in, in that instance, or if we want to break, break it out. And Is there a reason you want to go stricter than Title V? Um, I was just being consistent with the majority of what the other towns are doing. Um, I have no, and no specific thought other than where you were going is, you know, if there's an irrigation well that's unbeknownst to us receiving leachate from a failing septic system, they're then going to be spraying it on their lawns. Kids playing kids in kids it. Kids playing in it. So, you know, the bacteria count can get high. So that was the only thought where I said, well, What number, I don't what number are you it. specifically talking about? Sorry. Um, so under 4-4, four, four, mm -hmm. um, number 3, okay. and number 4. So 100 feet and 50 feet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's on the yeah. short end. Only 100 feet is on the lower so. end. I think so. Well, by what you're saying is they would be, this would be a stricter. I think so. so but now that you, but less. now, yeah, but now that you say that, we have to double check. Okay, we'll put yeah. an asterisk there. Yeah. Because now, yeah, now I'm doubting you, myself. You, you, <laughs> might, you might have to check other towns, to be honest with you. And I'm all for it, to be honest with you. But you just might want to check to see the consistency and the averages of the towns that you've compiled. And that's something you can grant a variance for, too, I'd imagine, <laughs> if there was a, a reason to. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's, yeah. A, there's a variance section, which you'll, you'll see is very similar to the Title V variance hmm. approach the process yeah because I, I think I would definitely want that in there if somebody came forward and says hey I have an irrigation well and it's here mm -hmm. well that's thank you for coming forward with that and we can approve it and grant the variance yeah you know. I mean we have requested that existing yeah. wells be you know identified to us yeah. so it's not to change you know change them at all or punish them at all it's just to know where they are yeah so it yeah, wells for future development so it protects Text them. Text them. As well. yeah. um, and that's section six, you know, um, private well registration. So that's for pre existing wells of any kind, you know, let us know that they exist and where they are. Um, so I think we've touched on section eight, well construction. Um, section nine is the water quality. Um, there are several items that are, yeah. So I see here too. Pursuant to what we were talking before about and or, I see on your uh, permit that you have that conservation approval and DPW approval. So you, us or you specifically, would not be able to issue the permit without signing off from those other two entities. And that happens, and that happens with us through building. So the building department gets building permit applications, and once a week I go down to the building department, I take the pile. And I review setbacks to yeah. the septic systems, make sure the bedroom counts are appropriate, or if, you know if they're doing a demo, I make sure that they've done their pest inspections and their um, asbestos inspections. So there is a bunch of cross okay. cross referencing now. And for example, so conservation, when I get a plan for septic, we give a copy to Pat. Pat makes sure that what's on the plan is true. You know, he'll do a site visit or he'll check based on his knowledge of you know the area yeah. to begin with and they'll say no issues with conservation and we just kind of move, move forward yeah okay so we already kind of have that system that established, established in okay. in other areas okay. um, so we touched on the water water sampling procedures so this added little document that you'll see i referenced that's specifically for potable wells for drinking water wells so that's why there's a separate little section that Steve you touched on the section nine five where I specified things for irrigation wells. Um, section ten is inspection and information at time of property transfer. So that's going to be an important one to pay attention to for sure. Eleven is decommissioning, so that we don't have holes in the ground that kids can fall in. You know, we want just like when somebody terminates use of a septic system, they either have to crush or 
pump and fill their septic tank so that there's no um, entrapment potential. Same thing here. We don't want kids falling into wells because folks haven't properly decommissioned their wells. So we have that section in here. Um, there's a, a few lines for things they're not allowed to do no matter what. Um, and uh, so 12.7 is almost in a, a copy of um, what we were just talking about. No lot may be served by both public water supply and private drinking water well. So maybe that's something to copy into the other section if that's clearer. Um, 13 is a variance section. 14 is enforcement. 15 is a hearing. All very similar to the Title V process. And then the last few sections are appeals, penalties, what our responsibility is as a department and board, and then all the typical things that come, severability, disclaimer, um, adoption, effective date, et cetera. I think you got an awesome guideline here. Yeah. Just a couple little. Job well done. Let's see. We'll see what you think once you think about it, because I know I've been stewing over them and I'm kind of too close to them now. Well, skimming through it, so. I, just a couple little things that we picked up on, but I, I think the the overall thing is is excellent. I think the setbacks are going to be something that you know I'll really request you to think about because you all know situate a lot better than I do at this point, so you know what's realistic. You know, are the lot sizes big enough to require what we're asking for certain setbacks? West End, so, yes. But in other areas, maybe no. not. So, so where's that kind of middle ground where we're consistent with other towns, but we factor in situate specific needs? So, you, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that you know, you folks are going to know a lot better than I am at this point. So, if something that's what really keeps mulling through my mind. Not only the setbacks, but plan requirements, because you get into a smaller neighborhood and you could really bog someone down mm -hmm. with with work. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking back in my days as a field chief, you know, banging on a lot of doors and. You do the best you can to get that information, but usually we just knock down person at home or information unavailable, and hopefully the health agent would yeah. understand that you put your best foot forward, you, you're providing the best information you can, yeah. and we're usually not going to do it twice, but after that it's like, what do you show up on Sunday at dinner time? And there's a lot of stuff nowadays that can be done for better or worse from a computer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, where we're saying, you know, please identify all these kinds of land uses. You know, there's this computer software where you can press buttons and you can, you know, use your GIS layers to identify certain things. You know, local engineers are going to know where the landfill is, where the transfer station is. So they're going to be things that are going to be like, ah, not relevant, not relevant based on where I am. So hopefully it will be easy. And if we need to teach folks, you know, very quickly a way to use the mass DEP searchable site list for locations with contamination. It's very easy. It takes 10 minutes. And so I bet you most engineers would be teach. ecstatic to, mm -hmm. to see something like that if they don't already know about it. That's yeah, another tool so in makes, the toolbox. Yeah, it makes it easy. Yeah. Did you get a, res a, a, a response on when, when you brought up if it is serviced by town water, can you put a portable well? No, we just established no. No, I think we should. Well, oh, uh, can, oh, meaning oh, beyond our purview. Is it allowed? Period. No, if you're serviced by town water, right? Can or can can you put a part of a well on, or can you not? Yeah, Are you, you just allowed? have to turn off your your water meter, right? You got to turn off your water meter. Yeah, you have to probably contact right. the town, but you might want to. Well, or do we want to consider not like allowing it? You can't do that, Michael. You can't do that. It's serviced by town water. Yeah, but he, so what? So I don't want to pay the uh, my water bill. I want to put my own well. Oh, no, I'm just. I'm going to do I'm going to the next that, that would eliminate about six pages right here. <laughs> um, yeah, so then we'd only be talking about new well, construction. Well, well, because it's a it's a public. You can't. You know, it's for the public good. You know. Um, but parts of Border Street right now, parts of Border Street don't have public water. So let's say one day the water lines are extended towards Cohasset for one reason or another, you know, do they need to disconnect their private well and hook up to town water? I think that, so there are existing homes that have one versus the other already. I, mean, I, guess, could probably I, guess, I guess if you do want to do a well, you're going to have to jump through these hoops. There's a lot of hoops there. Right. And, and, and that was my point about irrigation. It's going to be, 
I don't think there should be as many hoops on the irrigation, but, but that's... Well, water resources might think differently because if we don't make it at least an eff, you know, to make them go through an effort to, yeah. to really understand, you know, what they're doing and that there that are maintenance issues associated with this, that we are going to have irrigation wells going in in every house in situate. We're going to be draining the water supply mm -hmm. just through different means. You know, mm -hmm. people aren't turning on the taps to drain the water, but they're pumping from their own wells. So I think it's a tough balance for us to acknowledge people's potential rights to put in their own water supplies, yet at the same time realize that all the water is coming from the same place, that we're all using the same aquifer for one reason or another. Well, it's coming from the sky this year. So, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> With all the road salt and everything else and the brine mixed in. So I think, you know, and maybe there is a different level of hoops to jump through, and that's something to think of when well, you're reviewing. Well, do we have designated areas in the town, of, you know, like a zone two? Do, do we have aquifer? Tables, do we know where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so DEP's got a map for that. Right, yeah. so, so zone USGS two, map. Yeah, zone two is a certain radius around yeah. public water supply yeah. wells, and then, you know, class A water supplies, you know, a certain distance around our reservoir, which well, isn't, isn't, you know. Well, some yeah. of this, nothing yeah. for nothing, yeah. maybe that we're looking at the framework, but questions like that may be addressed yeah. by the yeah. the water resource committee. Well, that well would, because they're not, they're, they're, they are probably going to not want any wells in the zone two. I think okay. some towns do disallow you to put a well in, in if you're in zone two. Did you see that anyway? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean in the you know small sampling that I took mm -hmm. that you know other towns don't. I well, mean, you I took a, a good sampling for area towns and ones that are. For us, I mean, that's it's yeah. I tried to hit the coastal similar I'm size. Satisfied with that, yeah. I wouldn't, but uh, I didn't see it, mm. but that's certainly. But I think questions sense. like that is why we're handing this out to different boards. It, we're looking at it from a health standpoint, not from a water uh, conservation standpoint, and that might be what conservation and the water resource uh, commission mm -hmm. would step up and say, "Hey, this is what we think at an open public meeting, mm -hmm. meeting, and that's why we're suggesting." not to put irrigation wells in on us, have these certain setbacks to limit the amount of irrigation wells. And then at that point, we can listen to them and say, okay, we'll They know pretty good. You want to be embarrassed in some of these meetings, the selectmen meetings, they know exactly the water table, mm -hmm. what we can do, mm -hmm. what we can't do. They yeah. know very well what's, yeah. what our capacity is and what we yeah. need. Yeah, there's monitoring wells all right. over town that right. they check regularly. Right. And you can check those on the state as well. And one of the concerns they have mm -hmm. is um, at this point, wells are going in and nobody knows about it. So yes. they were thrilled that at least, at the very least, you know, being proactive, there's not a reactive. sense of accountability and a sense of knowledge gained <coughs> by what we're trying to do as opposed to no oversight and no knowledge of the numbers. Well, we've talked about that. That's, that's, a, that's, the, that's, our biggest, <laughs> that's the biggest problem right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think we're right on track. As long as, I mean, do you guys think in two weeks we can review this and... Yeah, you know, read through it and, yeah. and have our comments, and then hopefully, and in, in if we approve it next week with changes, two weeks following that, we'll have something that we can pass out to the other committee. So, mm -hmm. almost within a month, mm -hmm. I would think, and you know, arising, we don't have another blizzard. Nothing <laughs> in the forecast this week, so one week at a time. Well, it's New England. April April first, nineteen ninety seven, right? April Fool's Day, so like twenty four inches. Yeah. Melted the next day. And I I got I got to play flag football on Storo Drive because Storo Drive was closed. I was in college. <laughs> there you go. Good old BU days. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's all I have. You're definitely gonna need both of these you know, side by side. Yeah. You know to review. All right. Um, <clears throat> meeting minutes. If you guys look through any of the meeting minutes, you want to take a minute to review? We can uh, we can put a couple of these to bed tonight. Um, I did email those to you Susan, a couple times. A while ago. So yeah. I wasn't here December 22. You were? This is one of the more than here. <laughs> I thought you were. A guy who looked like you was Give me credit. Okay, so I'll take you off the list. Well, I just don't want 
Oh, yeah, that was the five Williamsburg Lane one. You yep. can leave me there if you like. <laughs> you were there in spirit. I, I was just stating in fact. Thank you. weeks ago saying uh, emailing stuff <clears throat> we had a uh, little brown out flickering up the lights so my computer uh, fried. six feet six feet under oh. yeah. luckily though I purchased it less than a year ago so I got a full refund nice that doesn't happen too often usually no. you've had it 366 days <laughs> yeah, <laughs> So needless to say, I, I didn't read many of the notes on my little phone. Well, yeah. Well, we always have hard copies. Yeah. A lot of shoveling the past two weeks. A lot of shoveling. <laughs> it's the first winter in history I've actually lost weight. <laughs> you weren't, Steve, you weren't here. Which meeting? The 24th? The one when the lawyer was here for um, five million part. Right. November 24th is stuff we talked about tonight and Right. I'll make a motion and we accept the minutes uh, for December 22nd, excluding Mr. Steve. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, well, the, that's my first motion. All right. Uh, that is seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll, um, then I'll make a second motion that we accept the minutes for November 24th. I second it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh. So our next meeting is March 9th. March 9th. Okay. Holy crap. Time flies. The uh, clocks spring ahead. One hour, March 8th. For that meeting. Yes. So we'll leave here. And we'll be in uh, meteorological spring. Yes. FYI. Oh. Hopefully it will feel like spring. Is there any other um, business before the board? Does anybody, we, we administrative invoice approvals, we signed off on everything. 
Uh, meeting minute approvals, we just did. Is there any uh, new business, any old business, anything anybody want to bring up? Administrator report, nothing you need to tell us or anything. It's all the same stuff from the last meeting. It was only about a week ago, so yeah. nothing, nothing new. Nothing new. Nothing new. Then, well, uh, actually, no, that's not true. There is one thing new. Um, so we have been working with um, Council on Aging, SANS, um, and I guess us, um, to coordinate a shoveling effort for seniors and folks that are disabled and need assistance through town after all of these crazy storms. So um, SANS, so simultaneously, SANS was on a conference call statewide about how to get assistance. And at the same time, the Council on Aging was building a list of folks who need help. Um, so SANS, through this call, was put in touch with a group called Nahama, which is the Jewish word for comfort. And they are um, an, a national relief organization based out of Minnesota, but some of the members have local ties to the South Shore. So they volunteered to come to Situate and bring a crew and start our list. So they have been for now over a week coordinating efforts that have expanded to Salvation Army, another group called All Hands, which you may have seen on the news in Boston, um, and Charlie Powers in town, um, organizes a group of students um, and teenagers that fundraise all year long and then do a service mission to Appalachia during the summer. So some of his kids are doing local service now mm -hmm. in coordination with Nahama. Um, and they have, in the past week, collectively, all these groups under Nahama's direction have shoveled out walkways, driveways, oil spouts, and some roofs at 46 homes wow. in Situate. Wow. Um, so great. it's quite Fantastic. an effort and quite a yeah. remarkable group and, and bunch, you know, several groups, you know, under the direction of Nahama, and they have been a blessing to many folks who don't have the means to get out there and shovel themselves or don't wow. have the means to pay somebody to do it. So this group has swooped in and... Uh, now these local kids, do they come in? You mentioned Minnesota or... Um, different yeah. places are they flying in for this? yeah so so one of the two gentlemen um, from the Hama was working on another you know disaster relief mission somewhere else in the country and they flew him back in here um, with his local ties to, to coordinate and organize this effort. so his local ties would put him up yeah it? yeah he's been staying with friends and, and stuff like that they've been staying they've been staying locally they've been doing this all on their own um, complete volunteer work. Wow. They, you know, Great. they haven't asked for anything. They haven't needed anything other than volunteers, and they, they, they've been taking it and they've been running, and they're, they're amazing, absolutely amazing. So they've done a lot of work. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very, very cool. cool. So, so groups that should be commended and, and recognized um, for all they're doing to help help folks here that just can't do it themselves. So that's the only new, new news. Excellent. And they'll be here at least through this week because I think there's 20 more houses on the list. Wow. Yeah, I feel for them. I did my neighbor's house. South side of the house, there was a five foot snow bank over the generator and mm -hmm. gas line, mm -hmm. which, if you don't do your gas meter, it mm -hmm. can freeze. Yep. It's got a breathe, it's got a vent on it, too, which vents the air pressure, the gas pressure going in. As soon as the shovel went in, I got a whiff of it. Ooh. So, yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she's venting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the town has put out several yeah, advisories just, to those to those yeah. effects, but some people just can't can't do it on their own. Yeah. We needed the snowblower. We couldn't get it. It was just so packed. We couldn't get to it. We needed a snowblower. Snowblower to get to the snowblower? The snowblower to get to the... It was just so bad. It didn't it horrible blow. Spring will come. Yep, not soon enough. So that's it. Well, that's a pretty okay. cool story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. It's uh, uh, this area has gotten a lot of help from from other people. Yeah, a lot of help. So yeah, well, Pen I know PennDOT, New York DOT. You know, so many so many states have sent aid our way. Um, well, Canada sent down to those ice melters, and yeah, Vermont has sent uh, sent sent some folks down with machines. So 
So yeah, we've been, we've been pretty lucky, you know, with folks reaching out and, and providing assistance. Cool. Well, that was a nice story. I'm glad you shared it. Makes me feel a little better about the world. It does. Yeah. 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 We need does. those good, good people out there. Good people yeah. stories. You had too much of the bad. All right. Move to adjourn. Make a move. Yeah. Call in favor. All right. Okay.